You're about to hear a new NBC presentation, Cloak and Dagger, program number one in 90 minutes of continuous mystery and suspense on NBC. Following Cloak and Dagger, stay tuned for High Adventure, then listen to The Big Guy, NBC's new unique mystery series. But first, Cloak and Dagger. Are you willing to undertake a dangerous mission for the United States, knowing in advance you may never return alive? What you have just heard is a question asked during the war of agents of the OSS, ordinary citizens who to this question answered, yes. We have the honor at this time to present a former OSS officer, co-author of the book Cloak and Dagger, upon which this series is based, Colonel Corey Ford. Thank you. OSS, the Office of Strategic Services, was America's top secret intelligence agency during the war. It was this country's first all-out effort in black warfare, dropping undercover operators behind enemy lines, organizing local partisans to blow bridges and dynamite tunnels, outwitting the best spy systems of Europe and Asia. The success of OSS is known. But the story behind that success, the story of the everyday, average Americans of every race and creed and color who risked their lives knowing all too well that if they were caught, they would face torture and probably death, is what Alastair McBain and I have tried to tell in Cloak and Dagger. We feel it is a story in which every American can take deep pride. <laughs> The National Broadcasting Company takes you behind the scenes of a war that nobody knew. This is Cloak and Dagger. My name is Friedrich Schmidt. I'm a German soldier. I had a medical discharge from the Army. I was in the 268th Infantry Division. My family was killed in an air raid near Berlin. My name is Friedrich Schmidt. I'm a German soldier. I repeat it over and over again so I won't forget... My name is Friedrich Schmidt. Ah, where did I go wrong? Where did I go wrong? Think back and remember. From the beginning. Everything the colonel told me to remember. Remember, Frank, from now on you'll be Friedrich Schmidt, German soldier. You have your military pass, forged signatures of adjutants, hospital certificates, ration coupons, permit to travel. You know what to do. Yes, Colonel. Carl and I parachute behind the enemy lines in Austria. We radio back information on the strength and location of German troops around Innsbruck. You realize there'll be no help from headquarters? No contact waiting for you below? Well, sir, Carl knows the country and his sister is still living there. I uh, needn't tell you the risk you're taking. Of course, you'll land in American uniform, so in case you're picked up immediately, you'll be treated as prisoners of war. However, later, if you're caught out of uniform in enemy country, uh... I think I know what to expect, sir. All right, then. Just one more thing. The information we're after is vital. The Third Army is closing in fast, and we must know what's ahead for them. I'll expect your first message in ten days. You'll have it, sir. Oh, and, uh, by the way, Colonel. Yes? Uh, don't forget to have that package mailed to Rhode Island for me next month. It's my father's birthday. Cigarette, Frank? Uh, thanks, Carl. Carl, I, uh... Yes, what is it? About Liesel. About your sister. Oh, what about her? You haven't seen her for over five years. <laughs> over six years. Well, uh, six years is a long time. Running in. Hey, that's oh. us. Get ready to jump. Uh, what did you uh, want to ask about Liesel? Oh, nothing. Forget it. Ready, number one. Ready. Jump. I'll see you downstairs. Ready, number two. Ready. Good luck, Frank. Go. I heard the crack of the parachute as it snapped open. I looked down. 
I saw a patch of snow in the valley, spreading wider and wider in the moonlight, like a blot of milk spilled on a kitchen table. And I thought of Carl's sister, and the question I didn't have the courage to ask him. You all right, Frank? Yeah, I'm okay. Well, we made it. The first step. Yeah. You got everything? The radio all right? Just checked it. Nothing broke. Good. There goes the plane. Yeah. Heading back. He's gone. Let's go while it's dark. Sun's starting to come up. Yeah, keep that cape around you. There'll be people on this road soon. What do you think about that sun? <laughs> what about it? Astronomers must be nuts. That can't be the same sun I used to see back in Providence. <laughs> Maybe it isn't. Schlaf nun ein, schlaf nun ein, die Nacht ist da Morgen Hey, what is that? You've been singing that for hours. What is that, a kid's lullaby? Eh? I made it up. Oh? Made it up for Liesel when she was a little girl. I used to sing it to sleep with it. Oh. Frank? Yeah? On the plane, before we jumped, there was something you wanted to ask me about her. What was it? Listen, eh? here comes a cart. Watch your cape. Don't let the wind blow it. Yeah. Heil Hitler. Good morning, Fräulein. Heil Hitler. How many kilometers until the railroad station? About two kilometers. Ah. Feeling dark. Danke schön. Good, only two more. Uh, this rucksack weighs a ton. Hope there's no standing room on that train. I hope there aren't too many German officers. Come on. You know, one thing I like about European trains... What? These little compartments. I'd just as soon be closed off in here until we get where we're going. We've got to get rid of these American uniforms, Frank, as soon as possible. Well, we'll just have to find two obliging German soldiers who will be willing to give up theirs. <laughs> that obliging they are not. Well, so far they've been. Let us have a nice compartment all to ourselves. Well, there's no guarantee they'll let us keep it that way, you know. <laughs> I know when these things here. Oh. Get out your tribal permit and identification now. Right. Hope those papers are good forgeries. They better be. Gentlemen, your identification, travel permit, if please. Uh, yeah, Herr Inspector, yeah. Uh, Now yours, if you please, Herr Leutnant. Here you are. Yeah. Here are your papers, Herr Leutnant. These seem to be in order. Danke schön. How much longer till we get there? About uh, 30 minutes. You think he was suspicious? Well, he didn't pack it. Just the same if anyone else comes. If you have to take off your cape, take it off in one motion. Your jacket with it. We might get away with a khaki shirt. Our luck's held out so far. Maybe nobody will come. Well, let's hope so. You oh, oh, here comes company. Here comes trouble. Uh, may I show you compartment, gentlemen? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, Herr Hauptmann. Uh, yeah, it's stuffy in here. Why don't you remove your cape? Well, uh, it was so cold in the snow country. We're both of us just back from there. Uh, it will take us time to thaw out. Uh. <laughs> uh, join me in some snaps, gentlemen. Ah, thank you, thank you. And you? Thank you, Shen. Uh, these trains, either too stuffy or too drafty. They're all badly on down since the war. Uh, are you warmer now? Oh, much. Then remove your capes. Uh, I perspire looking at you. <laughs> well, uh... Go on, take them off. The Hauptmann is right. It is hot. Better. Ah, much better. <laughs> ah, are you going to Salzburg? Uh, no. Insing. Uh, sure. 
You must forgive me. Perhaps it's the heat. Uh, perhaps too much of this bottle. I'm going to stretch out in the empty compartment next door. I'd appreciate it if you gentlemen uh, would wake me when we get off at your station. Well, I will be happy to. Well, then I'll see you again. You'll see me again and soon, Frank. Wait here with the radio. What are you going to do? Our friend was warm. I'll help him out by relieving him of his uniform. No, Carl. No. They'll, they'll find his body before we get to anything. Me. They'll find it on the roadbed two days from now. No, Carl. You can't take that risk. One of us in German uniform would help. Wait here. Kindly raise your hands. I was not so drunk as either of you thought. <laughs> it's too bad about your friend. An unfortunate accident. He fell from the train. A pity. It was as if I were standing three feet behind myself, watching, watching myself knock the Luger out of his hand, watch my fingers go around his throat. He gave a few convulsive jerks, and then he was still. In his hand, he held a button he had ripped from my shirt. For some reason, I reached down and I took it from him. The next few minutes, I worked fast. The train was slowing down. I stuffed my uniform into the rucksack where the radio was and borrowed his. It wasn't a perfect fit, but German uniforms never are. And this German wouldn't be needing his anymore. I opened the door of the compartment and for the second time that day, jumped to German soil. Think slowly now. Somewhere from that moment on, I made the mistake. Where did I go wrong? Where did I make that mistake? You've made a mistake, Herr Leutnant. My brother is not in Austria. Please uh, listen to me. Carl was with me. We were both coming here together before the accident on the train. You're mistaken. My brother's not in Austria. Please, I'm taking a chance coming here at all. I only have Carl's word that you'll help me. My brother is not in Austria. Look, I'm tired. I'm hungry. Liesel, poor Carl. There's not much to eat. Some bread and some soup. Sit down. I'll bring it to you. I watched Carl's sister as she went over to the stove. She was small and dark, and her hair was cut short and brushed back. It was fine, like soft baby hair. I felt so tired, I wanted to brush my face against it. Here's your soup. A danke schön. There's more in the pot if you want it. I'll be back. Where are you going? There's someone you might like to meet. A contact. I'll get him. Stay here and eat. I'll be right back. I see you've finished the soup. Yeah. I hope it isn't all you have. Oh, no, no, no. It's all right. Where's your friend? Friend? Oh, uh, you mean, uh, well, he's coming. He's coming soon. Good. Carl said you'd be in touch with the Austrian partisans. I need help, Liesel. I need all the help I can get. My friend should be here any minute. I think I'll wash the dishes now. Since everything around us is in such disorder, I... I like to keep some order about myself. Here, I'll wipe. Do you mind? If you like. Why does this seem so funny? What? What's happened to the world when you start taking the crazy things for granted and the ordinary things seem out of tune with the rest of the living? Like watching a woman doing the dishes, helping her. You don't seem tired anymore. No, I feel fine now. Fine. Schlaf nun nein, schlaf nun nein. Nacht ist da. How did you know that song? Carl. Carl was singing it. Oh, oh my Lord. Oh. Liesl, what is it? 
You're pale as a ghost. I didn't know. Oh, Lord, I didn't know. You didn't know what? What are you talking about? The Gestapo is coming. I told them you were here. What did you say? The commandant, Gubner, he suspected me for a long time, but he's had no proof. I thought he he had sent you to, to trick me. I was afraid. Are you telling me the truth? Yes. Are you telling me the truth now? I swear I'll it. shake it out of you if oh, you don't... you've got to trust me. You have no one else to turn to now. You've got to trust me. Oh, you've got to trust me. I should kill you. I ought to kill you. Now, listen to me. You can get out of the back door now if you want. Oh, but don't know you won't get far there. Oh, you better go down there to the cellar and trust me. Open up in there. I have no choice. Quick, 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 that door. It leads to the cellar. Go quickly. Open up. In a minute. Well, where is he? Gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone? Well, I... I try to keep him here. I I couldn't without arousing his suspicion. Yeah. So I, uh... Yeah? Well, you asked me not to do that, remember? Yeah, go on. Well, he was only passing through. He said he, he had a friend in the mountains. In a hut in the mountains. He told me where it was. You'll take us, then, now. Of course. Sergeant... Just follow me. Round up the men. Yeah, here, come along. After you, Liesel. <laughs> I needn't tell you you're doing a great service for the fatherland. Take your hands off me. I've given enough proof of my loyalty. <laughs> Yes. Any word from Frank or Carl yet? No, Colonel, nothing. Oh, something hit a snag. It's been 12 days since they jumped. Well, let me know. Wait a minute. Something Here's something now. now. 2345. Brooklyn calling. Brook. All well. That's it. Brooklyn. This is That's Brooklyn. the code name. Hey, he's coming through the clear. Time is now 2345. Huh? Come in. Over. Dodger to Brooklyn. We hear you. Over. Average 14 inches snowfall nightly. Take this down. Yes, sir. Average 14 trains a night being assembled. Carrying sugar to Dixie. Carrying supplies to southern German All plant. snow jamming Grand Canyon. All trains routed by Borelberg Tunnel. Juniors gaining weight. Over. Wehrmacht gathering strength. The corporal, let me at that radio. Dodger to Brooklyn. Making this fast. Sending it in clear... Imperative, learn within two weeks disposition of all airborne troops and units within your area. Good night. Good luck. Over. Well, Co. Keep the home fires burning. Good night. Over and out. Well, that's the first one, Liesel. They got it. I haven't got much time. You heard him just two weeks. Oh, don't worry. We'll have the information. Uh, how nice it must be to be Liesel. So confident, so cool and sure. But I'm not. I'm afraid. I don't sleep at night. I'm afraid all the time. Oh, Freddy. Freddy. Lisa. <laughs> From the night I first came there and crawled into the corner of that damp cellar while she led the Gestapo on a merry chase through the mountains, Liesel and I worked hard. My radio aerial was set up, hidden, lost in a mass of clothes lines. Together we rounded up Austrian partisans. Where did I go wrong? So you are Liesel's cousin, Freddy. Yeah, Herr Commandant. I am Liesel's cousin. Would you, uh, would you like some wine, Commandant? I didn't know Liesel had a cousin from Berlin. We knew she had a brother, Carl. Well, Liesel and I never mentioned Carl, Herr Commandant. We're loyal Nazis. Ah, yes. Prost? Prost. I suppose she told you what happened to her a few days before you came. Some, some more wine, Commandant. Ah, I haven't finished this glass yet, Liesel. You seem nervous. It's uh, such an honor having you visit us here. 
Well, at least it'll... You know, Herr Leutnant, your little cousin has been much nicer to me lately. I tried to convince her for some time that there are advantages to being friendly with the right people. I suppose she told you about the American spy who came here over a week ago. I find that hard to believe. I'm not sure what he was. He was in German uniform, and he may have been a deserter. Mm, possibly. In any case, we had a long search for nothing that night. We found no trace of him. You say you have a medical discharge, Herr Leutnant? The yeah, Herr Commandant. Hmm? The rest of my family was bombed out in Berlin. Oh, yes. I had no place to go, no one else to come to. So I came here. Hmm. Uh, strictly a matter of regulations. May I see your papers? Your papers, Herr Leutnant? I have them here. Here you are. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Herr Leutnant, this is the first time I've seen one of these filled out correctly. Thank you for the wine, Lisa. With your permission, I'll come back again. <laughs> What's the matter, Colonel? They must be closing in on him. Home team will travel. That means he's got to move the radio. I'm going with you, Freddy. No, 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 you're not, Liesel. You're going to stay here. If we both leave when I move the radio, Gubner is sure to be suspicious. But, Freddy... You go to Fritz Heimer. Tell him to send a courier to the other town. Tell him I'll be there tomorrow night. All right. Anything you say. Here. Let me sew on that button for you. No, no, it's all right. I'll do it. Take my mind off things. You're tired. You work too hard. If the Allied Army's eyes close as you think, maybe it'll all be over soon. I'll be back. Liesel? Oh. Forgive me for just walking in, Herr Leutnant. Good evening, Herr Commandant. The door was unlatched. It's all right, Herr Commandant. I was just passing. I wanted to say hello to your little cousin and invite her to dinner at my house tomorrow night. <laughs> you think perhaps she will come this time? Perhaps, Herr Commandant. Women are never very easy to figure. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, you're right there. What are you doing? Don't let me interrupt you. Oh, just this button. It came off. Oh, so I see. <laughs> Army training is so valuable. It teaches you so many things. Even sewing on a button. I'll tell Liesel you were here. That's very obliging of you. Only I believe you will not be in a position to tell her anything. What's that? You have made just the little slip I have been waiting for you to make. You are under arrest, Friedrich Schmidt. So many things to remember. An American cigarette could give me away, an English match, laundry marks, some clothing. Cut them out, patch them up. Little... Yes. Yes. Now I know where I made the mistake. The button... Americans sew them on in crisscross. Europeans in parallel. I was nervous and I forgot the button. And Gubner saw me. Get up. Come with me. You are wanted for more questioning. Ah. Your name. Your objective. Who sent you? Where are the American armies? 
My name is Friedrich Schmidt. I'm a... uh, your name. Uh, the commandant passed your name. Your objective. Your objective. Who sent you? Who sent you? Where are the American armies? My name is Friedrich Schmidt. I'm a German soldier. Oh, God, throw him back in his cell. <laughs> Sleep. Remember to lie when they come to take me out again for questioning. I wonder if Liesel got away. You're going on a journey, Schmidt, to another camp where they have even more persuasive ways of making you talk. I shall escort you there myself. My name is. Get up! I said, get up! Driver, stop at that tavern on the right. Yeah, here, Commandant. Ah, it's a pity, Schmidt. We shall share no more wine and little cakes with Liesel. I have something else in store for Liesel when I catch up with her. Her cousin. Yeah. I'll be only a few minutes, driver. You're not to speak to the prisoner while I'm gone. Do you understand? Yeah, here, Commandant. Frank, listen. He won't catch up with Liesel because she's with friends. Carl! Uh, you think a little fall from a train could kill me? Herr Gubner wants to know where the American armies are. He'll find out soon enough. It was your messages, Frank, that brought them there. They are. Carl, I, I, I don't believe it. Listen to me, Frank. Listen, you... listen to me. Our armies walked right into that Dixie front you told them about in your messages. Right now, they're only 20 miles north. I've got 1,500 partisans organized and ready to surrender the whole town and the mayor when they get there. It's impossible. You'll see. How, how do you mean by listen now? At the next fork of the road, there are friends waiting to take us through to the army. The three of us. Three of us? Yes. I imagine you have a few scores to settle on the way with Herr Gubner. <laughs> It wasn't coincidence, but a forged transfer that made Carl driver of that car. It wasn't luck, but carefully planned inside information that told the OSS exactly where Frank Baker was. It led to his release that closed the draw finally on file number 2218 with the words, Mission Accomplished. And Carl's story? Carl's Adventures, also based on actual incidents, is file number 2219 in next week's Cloak and Dagger. In today's true OSS adventure, the part of Frank was played by Joseph Julian. Ross Martin was Carl, the Commandant Barry Kroger. Raymond Edward Johnson played the Colonel, Bernard Pollock the Corporal. Dolly Haas played Liesel. This has been a Lewis G. Cowan production under the supervision and direction of Sherman Marks. Material heard on today's program was based on the book Cloak and Dagger by Corey Ford and Alastair McBain. The script was written by Winifred Wolfe and the music was under the direction of John Gart. This is Carl Weber speaking. <laughs> You have just heard the first of your new NBC Sunday Afternoon Mysteries. Stay tuned now for High Adventure, thrilling stories of action and suspense. Then be sure to hear The Big Guy, an exciting and different kind of detective. Now keep tuned for number two in NBC's new Sunday Afternoon Mystery lineup.